Hello my dear friends, you're on the Military Summary channel and today we will discuss the situation in Ukraine on the 31st of March of 2024. Today we have a lot of very interesting updates and details, so let's start. But before we start, I would like to give you my own opinion about the March because today is the last day of the month and according to my understanding, March was the last month for Ukrainians and we can like um, months of stability months of stabilities and more or less stable life of course we can't call the situation in ukraine like destroyed power plants like the fall of avdiivka like significant loss in ukraine as something like stable of course but i'm trying to tell you that april and May may are going to be much much worse for the Ukrainians than we uh, saw the situation in uh, March. Uh, of course, um, it's not just about the situation on the ground. It's not just about the that Ukrainians are losing on the battlefield and the Ukrainians and the Russians are pushing and getting significant results and so on. It's not just about this. First of all, and um, probably the most important is that today on the 31st of March, today the 31st of March was the last day when Zelensky had possibility to uh, let's say to make and to to make president elections so and now he's he's not he's still legal president of course his uh, let's say legal power his legal rights will be finished on the 21st of May but he's not going to leave this position obviously he will pro prolong his presidential term with the let's say martial law or something like this so we see that 31st of March was the last day when Zelensky had chances to make elections without, let's say, changing the president before one term uh, and another. So this is the first bad thing that uh, people from Ukraine will not understand. And of course, this will cause them some mental maybe damage or something like this. Another important thing is, of course, the Ukrainian losses. According, I follow the Minister of Defense of Russian Federation report about the losses uh, among the Ukrainian army and so on. And during the march, the Ukrainians lost around 27,000 uh, soldiers. It's more than in February. In February, the Ukrainians lost 23,000 soldiers. Uh, sorry, in March, the Ukrainians lost 30,000 soldiers. In February, 27. In January, 23,000 soldiers. And uh, uh, the uh, total loss of armed forces of Ukraine, according to the Minister of Defense of Russian Federation, is around 473,105, so around half a million. And if we continue the same numbers, as in March, February and January, so the same average number of losses, we can make a conclusion that very likely, 95-99%, that during uh, April the Ukrainians will cross the level of losses in half a million, and this is going to be another damage to Ukraine. Not to their military forces, but their mental situation to their mental understanding whether it worth it this war with Russia or not and of course the situation on the ground significant number of destroyed power plants the Ukrainians still able to find solutions how to restore support supply of uh, power supply of Kharkiv of Kiev of Odessa but we need to understand that the situation is going to worsen and the next month maybe the Ukrainians will not be able to find the solution how to restore the power supply now let's move to the situ situation on the ground and let's try to understand what happened in March and what is going to happen in April. Before we start discussion, the let's say latest updates in Novomikhailovka, and I just be a like, small spoiler, the Russians very likely establish complete control and tomorrow the Minister of Defense will provide us these details. But before that, it's better to go through uh, the line of combat contact during the March and to understand what happened and what should we expect the next months. For these purposes, let's increase the numbers of Updates since the beginning of months, and we're gonna see that uh, Zaporozhye direction, uh, western Zaporozhye direction, we see a certain Russian activity. Mainly, the Russians were bombing and attacking the Ukrainian forces in Kamyanska, Lapkova, Shirbaki, Mali Shirbaki. So, we see that there is something like a preparation probably before the next further Russian offensive, and we see almost complete absence of Ukrainian resistance from their side. Rabotina, uh, we see that the situation in this area is 50 50. We see Ukrainian attacks even with Heimers missile 
files and we see the Russian attacks with fabs and different types of weapon. The situation here is 50-50 but when talking about more details uh, the Ukrainians were in defense state and the Russians were in offensive and if we summarize uh, the uh, progress during the months we can say that the Russians managed to let's say uh, recapture retake positions they lost during the Ukrainian greatest counteroffensive to the northwest of Verbova and in the southern part of Robotsina. So regarding the situation 50-50 we see that the Russians are finishing March as the winners because they managed to gain something and the Ukrainians were just losing. Uh, now, then we're moving to Gulaipoli area, and this is probably new direction for March, and this is something new for the special military operation. During the months, we got a lot of geolocations, a lot of Lumur missile strikes in Malinovka itself. We have the Russian progress, Russian offensives between the villages of uh, Chervona in Zelyone Gai and the Russian attacks uh, towards, uh, let's say, Malinovka. So the Russians, we see, do have some plans about this area regarding this territory. And we see lots of explosions inside of Gulay Polia. So this is something new for this direction in comparison with the previous years. The next interesting area of course is Vremivka tactical bridgehead. During the months the Russians were bombing and attacking mainly the southern positions of the town. The Russians were bombing the Ukrainian in the trenches to the west of Staromayorska to the southwest of Staromayorska. The Russians were bombing the Ukrainians to the south of Orajaina and to the southeast of Orajaina. But in the end of March, by the end of March, the Russians probably for the first time since the for the previous six months conducted a first offensive operations towards the village. Uh, we remember we discussed this operation many times. The Russian personnel carrier was attacking the Ukrainians. The personnel carrier was attacked, counter-attacked by the Ukrainians FPV drones. So the main reason is during the March the Russians were preparing the foothold for further offensive and in the end of March the Russians conducted the first attack. So very likely April the Russians will make more attempts with the purpose to complete clear the territory. Or, um, we have almost nothing. We had almost nothing from Ugledar area. Just one attack from the the Russian side in the beginning of March between Prichistovka and uh, Shevchenkova. That attack was repelled by 58th motorized brigade. The Russians very likely managed to improve their positions, but after the 10th of March, the Russians didn't make any more, more attempts, so that's why I believe there are going to be nothing in April as well, as well as nothing in Uglidar. But uh, we understand that Nova Mikhailovka it wasn't uh, finished, the battle for Novy Mikhailovka wasn't finished today. Very likely the Russian uh, Minister of Defense will provide us additional updates tomorrow or thereafter. Now there are very likely is a clearing operation. During the previous 24 hours the Russians managed to improve their positions in the area. We will discuss the Russian progress in Novy Mikhailovka in the second part of the video. From important we need to mention and we need to note the Ukrainian artillery positions in the area. We can make lots of conclusions based on the maps and based on the icons we received during the previous months we see the Russian the Ukrainian artillery zone where the Ukrainians concentrated significant number of artillery systems and just pay attention how many artillery systems were destroyed by the Russians as a counter artillery fire and the same story we can uh, say about uh, Georgievka Marinka Krasnogorovka area in this area we can see another artillery Ukrainian positions artillery area that was also uh, significantly suppressed by the Russians and a lot of Ukrainian artillery systems were destroyed among the fields as well. And the same story we can uh, the same conclusion we can make uh, about the Ukrainian territory to the west of Nivoisko and another Ukrainian artillery positions area that was significantly suppressed by the Russians and the Ukrainians having significant losses in artillery systems uh, were defeated. So now the Russians continue pressure towards Nivoisko, towards Pyromaisko. Pyromaisko will discuss in the second part of the video, but very likely that um, in April and May the Ukrainians will be forced to move their uh, positions further to the west in direction of Kurahova and behind Girnik somewhere in the area of Kurahova the railways and very likely the during the April the Russians will continue offensive towards Krasnogorovka due to a Russian victory in the battle for Pervomaiskaya. 
Western Avdeevka operation also uh, has been almost ended by the end of the month. Uh, during the march, we got a lot of updates. The Russians managed to improve their positions. During the march, we got reports about the Russian control, established control over Toninka, Arlovka. There are still clashes in Berdychi. The Russians are finishing the battle for Pervomaiska. The first Russian troopers entered Semyonovka. And furthermore, we have also certain Ukrainian artillery pockets, artillery positions that were also suppressed by the Russians and significant number of Ukrainian artillery systems were also destroyed on the western Avdeevka direction. Furthermore, I'll remind you that during the March months we received lots of updates regarding destroyed Abrams tanks. According to information we have since the beginning of the special military operation just for the previous few months, maybe months, the Russians have already destroyed six Abrams tanks and if correct me if I'm wrong, most of them were destroyed either in the end of February and during the March. So most of them during the March, maybe even all of them, I don't remember exactly when the first Abrams will, was destroyed on Avdeevka direction. So the Russians continue clashes, continue offensive, and we will discuss the Russian attack with significant number of tanks in the second part of the video. When talking about New York Darietsk agglomeration, there are no changes since the beginning, probably, of the special military operation. We had no changes in the 2022, 2023, and now we see completely the same picture as there was. When talking about um, Ivanovska, Bakhmut, Artemov's direction, uh, the month started with lots of updates. According to information we have, the Russians established complete over control over Ivanovska. The NATO officers were destroyed in Chasov Yard, the Polish general, or some Something like that but uh, by the end of March we see complete reduce of Russian activity maybe the main goal the main purpose was to capture Ivanovska and now we don't see Russian offensive anymore so there are some local clashes in Bogdanovka towards canal but the activity is much less in comparison with the February or with January so very likely in April the Russians maybe will continue their offensive but this is going to be not so big pressure as we used to see during the previous months and the main reason of that is that the main Russian forces will be redeployed to the north in direction of Razdolovka. Also, if we take a look at this part, Minkovka, Rekhov, Vasilyevka, Zelizhnyanska, Privilia, so the road MO3 towards Slavyansk, we can make a 100% conclusion that the Russians are not going to attack this way because during the march we have received just four geolocations from the area and which confirms that the Russians have no activity on this direction. Uh, Sivir's direction, very likely May and April are going to be the priority, this direction is going to be the priority for the Russians due to significant activity of the Russian armed forces on the southern part, on the central part and of course in the area of Bilogorovka. Let's go step by step and first let's uh, take a look at the Russian attacks and Lush Russian clearing operation in the southern part of Razdolovka. We see significant number of icons, the Russians were bombing this area heavily and they started doing this exact in March. So just during the entire month the Russians were doing just one thing. They were clearing the area, destroying the trenches, attacking the Ukrainian supply roads, evacuations, ammo depots, everything. So I and by the end of the month, by the end of the month to be more precise on the 30th of March yesterday and on the 29th of March we got the first updates that the Russians started some offensives towards the village. So the same story as we used to see in Vremiv Katsaktikal Bridgehead. During the month the Russians were bombing and by the end of the month the Russians made the first attacks. The, the, here we can see the same picture. During the, the month the Russians were bombing the area and by the end of the month on the 30th, 29th of March the Russians made few attempts to attack these two villages which confirms that April that this direction is going to be the priority direction for the Russians during um, the April of uh, 2024. And according to concentration of Russian icons, they're going to attack the Sivir's direction, at least from this part, using two roads. This is the first road to, um, let's say, Razdolovka, and this is the second road to, uh, the, the first one was to Fyodorovka, and the second one is to Razdolovka. Also, we see a real Russian, big Russian focus along the railways from Bilogorovka towards Vyimka and further to Sivirsk, which confirms that this is also going to be uh, one of the primary targets, one 
of the primary roads of the Russian armed forces for further offensive uh, towards Siversk. We have certain activity in Bilogorovka, which also confirms that the Russians are going to renew their offensive in this direction. I have some doubts whether the Russians are going to do something with Bilogorovka. During the march, the Russians made a lot of attempts to capture this territory. They attacked this uh, Bilogorovka maybe tens of times, tens attempts, but all of them were repelled by the Ukrainians and to tell the truth, the Russians haven't managed to achieve even a 10% of the goals and objectives they had before this operation. You know that if we analyze the entire special military operation, uh, there is, uh, there are or there were three areas where the Russians had complete failure. Three areas. The first one is, of course, Uglidar. Since the beginning of the special military operation, the Russians tried to storm Uglidar probably four times, four or five times, and or every single attempt ended with significant losses and complete defeat of the Russians in Uglidar. And after that, they decided not to conduct any more attempts and to stop and to try to capture the foothold through Novomikhailovka. And after the final storm of Uglidar, the Russians start moving to Uglidar through Novomikhailovka from the north. The second area is Bilogorovka. That was Bilogorovka. It's not just like a difficult area for storming. This is also a big failure of Russian uh, command during the Ukrainian Kharkiv counter-offensive operation. Because I'll remind you, after the end of the battle for Lysychansk, Severodonetsk agglomerations, the Russians have already stab established control over the village and the edge Russian positions were, uh, let's say, located somewhere here. So the Russians were, let's say, along this red line. But during the Ukrainian greatest counter-offensive in Kharkiv, the Russians were forced to fall back towards even Shepilov, Lysychansk. And I remember that even Wagner's, uh, that the Russian commanders were forced to redeploy Wagner on this direction to stabilize the front line but after that a year and a half a year and a half after october ukrainian counter-offensive the russians made significant number of attempts to restore control over these positions and no progress at all no progress so this is another uh, let's say bad area for the russians uh, since the beginning so the second and the third one is of course sinkovka sinkovka was turned by the russians a lot of time for now they stop any attempts to do this once again but uh, it's i don't know whether the russians are going to renew their attempts to attack sinkovka but uh, the, the losses there is not so big in comparison with below of Kuglidar, but if the Russians continue, maybe they're gonna have the same level of losses as they have in Bilogorovka and uh, in Orozhaina. Anyway, we see the Siversk focus. We see significant number of suppressed and destroyed artillery systems behind Siversk. We see a significant number of destroyed ammo depots, uh, evacuation machines. So Siversk is going to be the next Russian priority for April and May of 2023. I, I, I'm not saying that this is going to be the only R Russian priority. Obviously, they're going to have a lot of plans in Novomikhailovka and many other directions, but this is going to be the target number one. Uh, south in Kupinsk, direction in the area of Tirny, the picture uh, speak for itself. Uh, this is um, uh, during the previous months, the Russians managed to improve their positions and almost got the outskirts of Tirny. And we had a lot of reports about the Russian progress that the Russians are inside of already Tirny. But when talking about the picture, we can see completely opposite picture. Picture. We see very low level of Russian icons, very low level, and we see significant number of icons from the Ukrainian side. And all these icons show us not just even the Ukrainian focus, but also the Russian roads of attack. So the Russians were moving from Kremina towards the Tirny always using the same road and always when the russians were moving the ukrainians were attacking them with fpv drones and all these icons show us we can save in complete superiority from the ukrainian side with fpv drones if the situation would be 50 50 we should see the same number of uh, drones and lancets to the west of the jeribets river but we see complete empty uh, holes you don't we don't it's a black hole in this area we don't see any resistance from the russian side we see a lot of we saw a lot of attempts we see ukrainian a uh, significant number of strikes and we see complete absence of ukrainian counter drone duels or counter artillery duels which confirms that the russians during the previous months probably in the end of february redeployed uh, forces from this area probably to another direction and now the russians main goal on turning direction is to hold the 
area as long as possible, not to lose the, lose the progress they managed to achieve during the previous months, until the end probably of the battle for Novomikhailovka or Avdiivka, and then the forces will be returned back and the Russians will be able to continue. North in Kupin's direction, complete absence of updates during uh, um, March. Just the Ministry of Defense report, this is not like the geolocations, the stars, it's just the geolocation about the Ministry of Defense report. So as you can see, complete absence of any activity, just some activity in Kislovka, Katlarovka, but also from mainly from the Ukrainian side. After the Ukrainians were defeated and were forced to fall back, they managed to regroup and they start pushing uh, slowly, step by step, but they start pushing the Russian positions there and very likely the Ukrainian Ukrainians will try to counterattack the Russians towards Tabayevka Krahmalia with the purpose to restore positions that they lost during the Russian offensive during the winter period of time. And so this is the situation the line of combat contact in the final area, of course, Belgorod direction. It's not Belgorod direction, probably it's the battle of two cities, battle between Kharkiv and Belgorod, and which city is stronger, uh, this army is going to win. And according to current situation, we see that Belgorod is much stronger because there are supply, electricity, food, work, job, everything, security, air defense. When talking about Kharkiv, nothing that I have just counted, uh, pres uh, present inside of the this town. Furthermore, I'll remind you that the main activity on the Belgorod borderlands were in the beginning of March, in the middle part of the March, but by the end of the March the activity was completely reduced and unlikely there are going to be any anything during uh, the uh, April or even May. So, we finish with short summary of the situation on the ground um, let's say since the beginning of March, now we have a clear understanding what is going to be next and now let's discuss the most important updates for the previous 24 hours and the most important updates are coming from Novomikhailovka where the Russians as a result of offensive managed to establish control over the trenches that located to the southwest of the village. We have the Russian personal carrier. We This video is longer. We have infantry, Russian infantry moving along the trenches. The Ukrainian FPV drones were striking them. So this is the, like say, confirmation of Russian control. And very likely the Russians are planning to move further to the north and to finally circle and to capture Novomikhailovka. Maybe the Russians have already completed this task. Furthermore, I'll remind you that according to different mappers and different updates for the previous days, uh, the Russians have already established control over the farms and that uh, the Russians have already established control over the fields to the north of the area. So all updates are telling us that very likely that the battle for Novomikhailovka has ended. Maybe if not today, maybe if not tomorrow, then obviously on Wednesday or uh, Tuesday or Thursday we're going to receive report about final complete control over the village. And then of course we have the question we have uh, that we can ask ourselves what the Russians are planning to do next. To storm Konstantin or maybe the Russians have other plans for the area. And if you ask my opinion, I suppose that the Russians, the next thing are going to do is to uh, storm and to cut 0524 road, this one, that connects Ugledar and uh, Konstantinovka from the south. So this is the next Russian goal, not to storm Ugledar in front, uh, Konstantinovka in front, not to lose soldiers, they will try to uh, keep a safe distance between Konstantinovka, Vadyanna, Ugledar and the fields, they will capture the fields, they will physically cut the row of 524 and then this is going to be another uh, bad position, checkmate position for the Ukrainians because from this position, Russian positions, they will be able to attack the Ukrainians to Konstantinovka from the south, the Russians will be able to increase the pressure towards Vadyana and this is operational space, so the next uh, things that are going to develop here are very interesting. We'll see what is going to be next. And furthermore, we expect that during May and April, the Russians will continue moving, uh, let's say, in direction of Paraskovyevka from the north, uh, from uh, the village of Benayman by the name of Pabeda, because we have a certain fire activity, fire anomalies in the area, which confirms uh, the Russian artillery focus and the Russian artillery fire in the area. Furthermore, the Russians continue suppressing and destroying Ukrainian artillery positions in the vicinity of Konstantinovka, between Konstantinovka and Lizavetovka. Now we are moving further to the north in direction of Pervomaiska. More and more reports, uh, more and more sources confirm that the Russians managed to establish complete control over the village and 
the story in Peromaiska is the same as in Novomikhailovka. The Russians cleared the territory completely, but not they captured the territory completely, the Ukrainians abandoned their positions, but now there are still lots of work to clear the area. So maybe tomorrow, maybe the same day as the report from Novomikhailovka, the Russians will confirm complete control over the territory, which will also confirm and mean that uh, the fields between uh, um, Pervomaiska and Nivoiska will collapse automatically, either the Ukrainians will be forced to fall back or they will be encircled and appear in the cauldron. And obviously the Ukrainians will try to save their personnel and they will evacuate from the area. And this Russian military experts are saying that uh, the Russians are not going to move further to Nitailova. For now, after the fall of Pervomaiska, this stronghold and Nivoiska, the Russians will try to dig in deeper on this line. They will try to dig in deeper, and the next target the Russians are planning to achieve is to storm Krasnogorovka from the northeast. So this is going to be the main Russian priority target for May and April, and this is exactly what they're going to do. And just, uh, let's say, a uh, few important notes about Krasnogorovka. Since the beginning of the entire Ukraine conflict in 2014, there were few strongholds in the area. Avdiivka, Marinka, Pervomaiska, Opetne, Spartak, former air defense base... Uh, uh, Orlovka, Toninka, Severna, so uh, Marinka, Novomikhailovka, lots of towns, lots of cities around Donetsk, and every single stronghold since that was created since 2014 was already captured by Russians except Krasnogorovka. So basically, Krasnogorovka is the final stronghold of 2014 of armed forces of Ukraine. And with the fall of Krasnogorovka, this is going to be the final page of the first chapter of the, let's say, the defense of Donetsk. So the entire first defense belt of 2014 will fall with the fall of Krasnogorovka. So that's why the Russians will probably move there after probably within the next week or even two. Very interesting information we received today from Toninka. If you remember during the previous days we discussed uh, how the Russians managed to improve their positions significantly from Toninka to the west. Uh, during the few days they managed to develop their positions for two kilometers to the west. So what's going, what was happening there? We were was wondering, asking ourselves the question, we have a lot of mappers confirming the progress and making some changes on the ground. We have even a video of Russian attack with significant number of armored vehicles somewhere in the fields to the west of Toninka. And today we got more details of that battle and the information was provided by the uh, pro-Ukrainian sources. Uh, the Ukrainians are saying that uh, the, Russian, the Russians used up to 36 tanks, 36 tanks and 12 um, personnel carriers. So in in uh, some, uh, total 48 armored vehicles to attack from Toninka to the west in direction of Yasnobrodovka. Probably uh, that was the biggest tank attack since the beginning of the special military operation. 36 tanks and 12 personnel carriers. And that was the reason how the Russians managed to break through this line and to um, develop significant results. Um, but the Ukrainians also saying that regarding the Russian attack, regarding probably the progress, the Russians during that battle lost 12 tanks, so 33%. And uh, maybe some personnel carriers, we can't tell for sure. But anyway, that was the biggest attack and the main purpose of the Russians was to break the defense and to get as close as possible to Yasnobrodovka. Very likely, the progress we can see right now in front of our screen is not the total picture of the situation. Very likely, uh, during the days, the map will be continue updating and updating and updating. When talking about Berdychi, the battle still continue. And from important is uh, important to say that another Abrams tank, the sixth Abrams tank since the beginning of the special military operation was destroyed. The Western countries sent Ukraine 30 of these machines and six of them were already destroyed and probably correct me if I'm wrong most of them were destroyed during the uh, March of 2023 once again, uh, Bakhmut Artyomovsk, no changes on the ground. The Russians are pummeling the area heavily with uh, with FAPs, with missiles, with ballistic missiles, but complete absence of changes on the ground or movements on the ground as well. And as we discussed, the main reason of that is that the Russians redeployed and changed their focus towards north in direction of Razdolovka, Fyodorovka. I can't tell you for sure whether the Russians are going to start their offensive today, this evening, or maybe the Russians will start offensive maybe tomorrow in the morning but this is obviously is going to happen very soon 
in the minutes, in the days, in the hours, the Russians will launch an attack with the purpose to get and to penetrate this defense belt and to capture Sivir. So this is going to be probably the main battle of uh, the late spring Russian campaign that will start very likely in two weeks and very likely the Russians will try to finish the battle probably somewhere by the end of July and after that they will do something else. Or maybe the Russians will try to make few attacks during the next few months, not just in Siversk. There are of course lots of opportunities for the Russians in Novomikhailovka and Avdeevka. So obviously during the next three months the Russians will come conduct three four big offensives like we used to see in Avdeevka so not one Avdeevka not one Bakhmut but probably three four Bakhmut Avdeevka we will see during the next half a year so they're going to big towns not so big as Kharkiv maybe maybe Kharkiv who knows um, south in Kupin's direction no changes north in Kupin's direction no changes as well so we see the situation we see the missile strikes we see Zelensky is losing his legal power uh, we see uh, the losses of Ukrainians half a million since the beginning of the special military operation once again uh, I will finish the video as I started March was the last month of stability for Ukraine April and May and further months are going to be much much worse for Ukrainians only if they start the negotiation process. And that's it for today. Military Summary Channel reminds me to condemn any violence in the world. Thank you for watching. Subscribe to my channel. Put your likes to my Patreon. And have a good day. Bye-bye.